Once again, U-75 braves the ferocious seas. Emerging from beneath the waves, torrents of water cascade down the hatch, flooding the bilge almost instantly. At times, the boat will heel dramatically to port or starboard, sending the crewmen tumbling from their blunks and clinging steadfastly to their stations. As morning turns to afternoon, the weather starts to improve. First, the heavy precipitation comes to a halt. Next, the clouds start to part and wind speeds reduce slightly. With the passing of the squall, the crew breathes a collective sigh of relief, knowing they have weathered another chaotic storm. Darkness descended upon the boat, and it was time for a routine hydrophone check. A distant contact was heard at 055 degrees. Klaus believed it sounded like a warship, but could not be sure. U-75 surfaced and turned to pursue. Under a moonless night sky, the two man diesel engines roared to life, propelling the boat towards the enemy. On the bridge, the watch crew gathered, their eyes fixed on the inky expanse that enveloped them. Visibility was almost nil. At 23.56 local time, after almost 20 minutes of closing towards the target at a speed of 16 knots, the watch crew shouted down with an exhilarating mix of relief and excitement. Ship spotted. Welcome back aboard the bridge of U-75. We are currently tracking a large freighter, and there it is. I can even make it out now up to 065 degrees. This thing looks huge, single mast, very long vessel. We are going to attempt to identify it. It is being escorted by a single warship. I think I can barely make out there. Let's go to the Uzo and see if a little easier to see here. Yep, there's the destroyer. It's very dark. Very difficult to see. And there is our freighter friend. Lock onto that bad boy. Okay. We have three torpedoes left. One in the bow, two in the stern. Tubes one and five are loaded with G7E torpedoes. They have a maximum range of around three kilometers which I do need to keep in mind. Let's also get a weather report. Wind speed is nine meters per second here. So I think our torpedo needs to run below five meters. We'll see, we probably will be using a magnetic pistol. As I flip through here, cargo steamer, this might be her, 5,000 tonner. Draft is 4.5 meters, perfect. Okay, set tubes one and five down to seven meters. Actually, let's do six meters. On both magnetic pistols, both the torpedoes will be running at slow speeds. I would like to shoot off tube number five, but I do not know if that is going to be possible here. I need to find a way to get the target speed. I could turn towards her. That does seem a little risky here. I have a feeling they are going around eight knots, though. Let's reduce our speed and try to match. There we go. Slow down. And we will try to figure out how fast the target is going. I could stop. The problem is in the seas. It could prove to be difficult. Come right. I think our best bet may be shooting tube number one. Shooting tube one at the target and then turning to starboard to escape. We are lined up nicely. Can I get a range estimate to yeah, the target, boy, please? Wow, a little farther than I thought. Okay. Looking good, length of this ship is 137 meters. the map. Yeah, things look okay here. I thought I heard a gunfire, but I think it was just a wave crashing against the hole. 
Got to make sure that the destroyer does not start shooting at us. Jawohl, Herr Keep coming right. Nice and steady. Go. Wind speed, 9 meters per second. Let me check this properly. 9 meters per second, 3.6 meters. Okay, perfect. All right. Where are you? There you are, friend. Slowly passing our bow. Where's the destroyer? There she is. It looks like she is just steaming normally. I would love to whip around and shoot tube five. I may do that actually. I may turn to port, shoot off tube five, and then get the heck out of here. Jawohl, Herr Kaloin. May I report, please. 2,400 meters. I think she's a bit closer than that. Do two kilometers right now. The target is about to pass the wire here. Let's get ready to start the stopwatch. And start. There we go. She is moving kind of fast. I am guessing seven eight, nine knots, something in that range. Angle on bow looks pretty good. 80 degrees port. Pretty difficult to make out though, it is very dark. 137 meters. I'm sure we got that plugged in. And... Hitting the stern, mark. Okay, 31 seconds. I got 8.8 .8 knots. All right. Set. Eight point five knots. Two five. We are going to fire two five. Jawohl, Herr Kaloin. Ruder hart backboard. This is not going to be a perfect angle by any stretch of the imagination. I want to shoot my stern torpedo too, primarily because I have two fish back there. Actually, you know what? Rudder amidships. We're in a good position. We are going to fire tube one. Okay, angle on bow is past 90. Give me a report. Yeah, below. Okay, set. Tube one, open. Everything set, tube one loss. Hard to starboard. Okay, torpedo away. Increase speed, all ahead full. Alright, we'll see if we hit with that. Time to turn away from the destroyer. Maybe we can swing around and fire off a stern shot. We will see if that is possible. What is my runtime? Runtime, it looks like it's going to be just around two minutes. U-75 has now done a 180. We are turned away from the contact. Let's increase speed to flank. Impact should be momentarily. Any second now, hopefully. Unless the torpedo just straight up missed, which is indeed possible. I did underestimate the range by a few hundred meters. It is also possible that the torpedo ran under. We can check the map here. Oh my gosh, it hit. The torpedo hit. Okay, there we go. They said the torpedo missed, but that was in fact a lie. We got an impact. 
it was overdue. Shift left. Where's our destroyer friend? Okay, there she is. The freighter looks rather intact, frankly. You know, judging by the lack of a reaction from the freighter and the destroyer, I think, I think the torpedo actually prematurely detonated. I think that's what happened. That is a shame. That would explain why they said it missed. They did say it missed rather early. I think it exploded prematurely and it just looked like it hit. We could try this again. The destroyer is turning away. Okay, come back around. Get in position. We'll fire off tube number five, I suppose. We'll see if we can get a little bit closer this time. Yeah, I think the torpedo did prematurely detonate, unfortunately. That makes much more sense. Well, we know our solution's pretty good, then. I, it looked like it was about to hit. It must have prematurely exploded right as it got close. All right, turn around. We are going to turn west for just a little bit to try to overtake slightly and then get into a firing position once again. We are once again in a pretty good position to begin our attack. Unfortunately, the destroyer, wherever she is, has been zigzagging about. Although I do not see her. There's our freighter friend. Scan left. There she is, there she is. Okay. Doesn't look like she realizes we are here. Thankfully, uh, they were not phased by that torpedo exploding. Let's turn in ever so slightly. New heading 300, please. Okay, and we are going to shoot tube number five this time around. I think speed and everything is good. Give me a range reading, three kilometers out. Weather report still 9 meters per second, direction 030. Copy that. Alright, turn in. There's a destroyer. She's moving fast, apparently. I. This is good. It does look like maybe the destroyer is putting more distance between us and the merchant. And we may be able to get even closer. We're moving 12 knots currently. I might slow down as we inch closer. I don't want to be kicking up a massive wake making ourselves super visible here. Okay, we turned slightly more reduced speed. Where's our destroyer friend? Okay, she has turned. Hopefully this is routine. There she is. Gosh, it's very difficult to make her out. That paint scheme is working rather well. It looks like she is heading away, though. Please turn back to starboard. Whenever the destroyer starts beelining towards us, that's when we know we have a problem. Okay, where is the freighter? There she is. All right, increase Jawohl, speed. Ein Drittel fahrt voraus. Ein Drittel we gotta get closer. Voraus. Okay, it looks like the destroyer has turned back away. Adjust course, new heading, 340. Okay, we will be shooting to 5, I think. Draft is 4.5 meters. I think 6 meters is fine. Magnetic pistol, slow speed. Let's get crew in the stern torpedo room. Um, just to see. I gotta shift these guys around. It'll take like seven minutes to reload. Okay, now's our chance to blitz in. All ahead full. Alright, we're moving in. It is now or never. 
We're going to keep that speed reading. We are going to move in, adjust course, turn north. Range the target. Zero five two twenty eight hundred. Get ready to swing around. That destroyer is going to turn here soon. Take a look at her. She is. She is distant. All right. Begin turning. Reduce speed. Open to five. Range. Twenty four hundred. Oh boy. Where's that destroyer? Now we could reverse as well once we are aligned properly and try to get a tad bit closer to the target. Okay, she's she's turning back. It looks like she is turning back on her original course, going back north. Beautiful. All right, here we go. Easy does it. Passing 270. We are lined up perfectly. Rudder emissions. Reverse. Begin reversing. Okay. Angle on bow. It just shy of 90 degrees to port. There we go. Set. Range two kilometers. Speed the same. Set. Tube is open. We are about to hit a zero degree gyro angle. I'll stop. Two kilometers. Ninety. Set. Two kilometers. Set. Tube five. Lost. All right. Tube five away. All ahead. Full. Time to get the heck out of here. New heading 160, please. Let's go. Actually, go flank. It's time to run. Run time was, once again, just over two minutes. Two minutes. Impact should be in a matter of seconds here. Come on. This would be a perfect way to end the patrol. Okay, run time's up. Got it! There we go. Directly amidships. That's an impact. The ship is on fire. Looks like steam is coming from the boiler. There we go. That is perfect. Now, let's shift left. Where is the destroyer? We're going to keep running at flank speed. Making 16 knots here. There we go, though. That's a hit. Star shells have been launched. They are illuminating the area. I don't even actually see the destroyer. I have no idea where she is. Give me a report, watch. 190. That's the freighter. I don't see the destroyer. That's good. The fact that we don't see her is good. And we are putting quite a bit of distance between us and the target. We need to begin reloading. Reload 2-5, please. 
Get some crew in there. Oh, we gotta dive deeper to reload. I forgot the waves are too choppy. We cannot reload on the surface at the moment. All right, slow Jawohl, down. Kleine Fahrt voraus. Keep putting distance between us. I can barely make out the merchant ship at this point. It is being obscured by the fog. However, we can see she is now on fire. It is quite dramatic. Let's turn around. Jawohl, I want to make sure we have visual confirmation of the Neuer sinking. Kurs, Let's also mark her current position here. Continue on our Jawohl, course. I have no idea where the destroyer is. I do not see her. There's only been a couple of star shells that have been thrown up. But I want to maintain visual contact on the freighter. I don't think she's going to be afloat for much longer. One torpedo is probably enough. And just see the glow of the fire on the horizon there. The watch crew has just spotted the destroyer. All right, turn around, turn Jawohl, around, turn around. Ruder All head flank. Where is she? 314. I don't... That's the freighter, I think. I don't see the destroyer. There it is. I see her searchlight in the fog. Okay, time to go. It's moving fast directly towards us. Uh-oh. All right, let's get the hell out of here. Uh, hopefully this sinks and we get credit for it. That's the only reason I wanted to stick around. Is that she is going to go down soon. All right. But if we don't get credit for it, that's fine. We know we've at least damaged a freighter. And we will escape with our lives. Okay, run, 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 run. Oh boy. Yeah, time to completely break contact here. Make sure we are not recharging batteries or anything crazy like that. We need all the speed we can get. And, yep, turn 180. Where's the destroyer? 144. Yeah, there she is, turning on her searchlights. I don't think she really knows where we are, thankfully. That's good. We're going to keep tabs on this destroyer and just keep on running. Oh boy, that is ominous, though. For a brief second here, I thought we were detected. It looks like the destroyer may be turning around. It is very difficult to see. Or she's just zigzagging about. Her bow was <laughs> heading straight at us for a second, and I got mildly concerned. Concerned, but she continued her turn to starboard. I think she may be looping around. This is exciting, though. I love conducting surface attacks. Evasion as a whole is a little bit easier than trying to evade depth charges underwater and being nice and slow. Unfortunately, due to the waves, we aren't able to make our full 18 knot speed. That's okay. It does look like she is continuing her turn. She is turning around. Okay. I almost thought I screwed us there for a second by trying to get closer to the merchant, which I have no idea where she is anymore. We did mark its position on the map. We are far from that merchant now. Yeah, we are over five kilometers away at this point. Um, Visibility is maybe four kilometers, three and a half, give or take. Uh, I don't even see the fire out there at all. Well, hopefully it's still there when we come back. We can always finish it off. I do like getting credit for it. Oh, wait a minute. No, I don't think this actually that that actually might be it co69 oh my gosh that is that is it we got credit for it 
I didn't. I must have completely missed the report that she is going down. Yeah, November 28th, 1941, 2252. That is what. That is base time. We sunk it. Okay, we received credit. Perfect. Okay, I was worried we would not, but yeah, let's get the heck out of here. No reason to go back. I must have missed the report that she is. There it is. It's right there. I completely missed it. I'm sure someone was yelling at their monitor. All right, she is going down. Let's get the heck out of here. That was extremely successful. That was awesome. Okay, clear this up. Let's part ways with this destroyer. The enemy warship faded into the darkness as U-75's diesel engines hammered away. After 15 or so minutes, the flickering of searchlights and flares on the horizon disappeared. U-75 had successfully broken contact. As morning came, the decision was made to turn and head to our new home in Greece. Our boat has been at sea for 27 days now, and it's really starting to show. U-75 has, however, sunk eight ships totaling 40,738 tons. With only one eel left and well over 50% of our fuel reserve depleted, it was decided now was a good time to head home. Navigating the waters of the Aegean Sea, U-75 forged ahead, its bow now pointing towards the storied island of Salamis. The journey was quiet and spirits on board were high. On December 2nd, 1941, U-75 pulled into our new home. The port facilities and the surrounding landscape still bared scars from the invasion, which happened over nine months ago. Salamis was in disrepair. The Luftwaffe did quite a number on the port. Getting operations spun up here was taking a while and proved to be a large logistical challenge for the Kriegsmarine. Dockyard workers were being siphoned away from the French ports and the shipyards in the area were rather rudimentary. I expect U-75 will be in port for a while. Well folks, that is going to conclude patrol one of our Silent Hunter 3 Mediterranean series. I do hope you all enjoyed it. If you did enjoy this video, please be sure to leave a like and comment as it really does help out the channel. But until next time, this is Wolfpack345 signing off and I will see you all on the next one.